I've got a question for you today. Why should someone that's interested in tech, interested in AI, choose the startup route versus working in industry? What do you think, KJ? Yeah, okay. So I didn't know it was going to be thrown back at me. I think we should talk to some of the Link Ventures people too. So, Boaz. Boaz. Boaz, we're coming to you. My whole goal with this channel is to demystify venture capital, make younger founders feel more comfortable with approaching people like me, approaching startups. And we have an incredible group of founders and just builders around our office every single day, grinding away. The, the energy has been really infectious. And I'm now starting this series on my channel where we can hear directly from them and their insights on specific topics. We also have founders from all over the place. So you'll hear from a Babson founder, MIT founders, a Harvard founder, and some Northeastern ones. So really excited for you to hear all their insights. Okay, so I'm gonna go head over to the Volcara team. You guys probably recognize them from last vlog, but let's let's see what they're up to. Hey, Drew. Oh, hey guys. I've got a question for you today. Why would someone that's interested in tech go the startup route versus work in big tech. Well, KJ, I think it really comes down to it's just fun working with your friends if you can. And then I guess you also just expose yourself to more upside when you're building something on your own as opposed to for someone else. Caleb, Caleb just walked over. Okay, well, because there is a lot of infrastructure and support at big companies, but you can just like build that yourself. Like it's not crazy difficult. And I think if there's a if there's a person in your computer that you can talk to that like explains how the world works to you for free or like effectively for free, you know, like the yeah. value you're getting out of that is like then like you kind of have no excuse not to do it yourself or like use a lot of the open source stuff. You know, you got to take advantage of the fact that big companies hate each other and they want to commoditize each other. So just 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 take all the free stuff they give you. And then I guess you can also like leverage the personal aspect. You know, you can go and like talk to people and like understand what their problems are. And even a single like software solution you build for one person, like that's value you're adding to the world. And like there are ways to scale that and people have done it before. What would you say to someone who's scared? I mean, just don't be scared. You just Google it. <laughs> like it like at a certain point, you just have to like lie to yourself and just like lie to yourself until you start seeing the returns because like it's rational to like assume that you can do it right it's statistically possible but you're just afraid of like not doing it so just like lie got it yeah cool thanks caleb okay we've got ethan over here um i think for me it comes down to two things first um being able to work with my buddies on something that I care about. Um, so like the whole team aspect and then being able to like be in control of my own objectives and realizing those objectives to create value in something I care about. Uh, same question for you. Yeah, I think it comes down to, uh, well, I, I think everybody was right about like one of the best things is that it's awesome to work with your friends. There's a lot less politics in it. If you get the right team, and, uh, you know, it's an adventure. Like, you know, you want to do this when you're young. You want to have an adventure. You know, you realize you're still learning. We have so much to learn and so much to improve on. And uh, it's easier to do that in, like, a startup setting where, like, you're really sort of in control of your own destiny. And, um, you know, break things and iterate, break things and iterate and do that quickly than in, like, a big tech environment. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just recognizing, like, hey, like, this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll see, like, what our uh, what our strengths are and definitely what our weaknesses are and we'll uh we'll get better from there that's good cool thank you that's it okay let's let's try to walk over to steven uh they're building a really cool product and i'm curious um i would say uh, one should definitely work on a startup because in the age of ai you have so much leverage in terms of technology in terms of how fast you can build uh, how fast you can iterate and test so you you know you can definitely leverage so much more resources and productivity and be able to really build your startup even with just by yourself so i think definitely in the startup world is a better choice here cool thank you there's really cool founders here working on some ai options trading kind of bloomberg terminal for personal people and i'm gonna go interview them too hey guys can i ask you guys a few a few questions? Go for it. Cool. So the question of today 
is, hey, say you come up across a person who is interested in working in tech. They're really interested in AI. They think it's a really cool field. Maybe they're a coder. Why do you think they should go the startup route versus simply working for a big tech company? Hey, everyone. I'm Ricky. I, I think when it comes to like using your intelligence and, and your technical abilities to have an impact on the world, which I think a lot of the people in you know, like our network, that's what they want to do. Like when, when you talk to them their first year, like, hey, I want to have the biggest possible impact on the world. And the truth is that if that is really what you're optimizing for, like now is the time to take those risks. Like at, at this age, when you're in your early 20s, when you have not much to lose, you don't have a family. Now is the time to take that risk. And the best way to do that is by going and solving a big problem, solving a difficult problem where you get to be the one that actually has that that impact. If you go to a big tech job, I mean, you're going to be optimizing this tiny little part of a process that's going to be inconsequential to anything that happens in the world. So that would be my answer. Cool. I would say that it's like investing. You can buy a stock and hold it. And that's totally fine for most people. But if you're someone who has like a large potential to have impact on the world, then I think doing a startup is like buying a call option. And the more variance that you're able to uh, experience, like it's strictly beneficial to the upside. And I think that one piece of advice that I would give out is a lot of people underestimate themselves and the amount of impact that they can have. You can really just like decide that something in the world is not the way that you think it should be. And there's a lot of power in that. And if you're just ridiculously stubborn and passionate about that problem, then there's a lot of ways that you can stack pieces of leverage on top of each other to get this like multiplicative effect and have that sort of like parabolic impact as opposed to the safe option. I mean, I, I tend to think of things like if if something is handed to you, you should always question why it was so easy for you to get you're probably not exploiting an inefficiency. You probably are an inefficiency and someone's exploiting you. If you're just accepting some salary at some job um, and you're probably not seeing your true potential for what it is and you're thinking like, oh, wow, someone's going to pay me 300K. Like, this is amazing since I'm only worth 100K. I'm making 200K of profit. But that's not really how it is. You're probably worth millions and millions and you're you're giving all of that up for this like tiny paycheck. So anyways, I got a little more intense, but that's how I feel about it. Okay, we have another crew of founders here. Let's let's start with Yoel. Here, I'm going to hand you this first. All right. So the the question today is for someone who wants to work in tech, maybe they're interested in AI, computer science in general. What would you say to them if they were considering startups and also considering working in big tech? Yeah, I mean, I'd say both of them have their pros and cons. Uh, as a startup founder, you're able to have a lot more creativity as to like what you want to build. Um, and you have more control over your destiny. Um, the pros of working at big tech is obviously there's a lot of talented individuals uh, who made big tech, big tech. Uh, so you'll be able to learn from what they've done in the past. Um, so, I mean, either track is great. Um, so I, I just say like, follow your heart and figure out like what's best for you. Cool. Sounds good. Let's go uh, ask the same question to Derek and Nick. Okay, so Derek, I know you're someone that hasn't worked at a big company, but what would you say to someone who's essentially like scared about joining a startup? Uh, startups are great. I get to build stuff all day. Um, I get to you know really flex that creative muscle. I get to play a bunch of different parts if I want to, learn a bunch of new things. It's just a slightly less structured environment, but for me, that's good. And I get to drink Celsius all day. So you know, that's fun. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Let's uh, roll over to Nick. Same question. Yep. Same question. Yeah, I think right now there's just more productivity tools coming out and they're just enabling people to get individual leverage faster and faster and faster. And the biggest blocker to being able to use the newest techniques, the newest tools is always permission. And I think that was always my frustration with big tech is like there's just like layers often of bureaucracy to get permission. And since I founded, you know, a company it's just me and my co-founder. And the permission comes down to like first principles. Like, is it secure? Is it going to help us move faster? And oftentimes the answer is yes. And so we can just build so much faster than in any other environment or any other time that I've worked in. 
go right so this one's gonna be a good one we have the ceo blitzy building really cool stuff you're gonna see their interview on the on the channel soon uh, so brian <laughs> how you doing so maybe you can uh, intro yourself and also today the question of the day is why should someone that's interested in tech interested in ai work in startups versus working in big tech Cool. Well, I'm uh, Brian Elliott. I'm KJ's friend. Uh, I'm the, the founder and CEO of Blitzy. Why work in a startup instead of big tech? I think you should optimize for rate of learning when you're young. And you have the ability to compound learnings if you get to make decisions that have impact. So that is the name of the game with startups you own the upside you own the mistakes and the feedback loop is vicious uh and for some people that's super exciting and super fun and uh, i've certainly fallen in love with it and will be going to for the rest of my life all right cool thank you why do you think kj that uh folks should be getting in startups and not in big tech yeah okay so i didn't know it was going to be thrown back at me i think there's elements from a lot of the different answers today i think one is the autonomy it's being able to kind of choose what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Like someone else said too, it's like capturing all the value that you can produce as a person. Uh, you're not just like contributing to some huge cog. Uh, you're not just like a screw in a big yeah, yeah. machine. Right? You get to really express a lot of the value yeah. that you possess. And I think it's just more fun. Yeah. Like being able to move fast. Optimizing for fun and learning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and should we flip it on our the front kj the man behind the camera for the final answer to yeah, so let's go <laughs> <laughs> this is kush introduce yourself i'm kush i work with kj i've been in a few of the videos before this um i think there's a huge like value per person every single person probably has a value and i really agree with like ricky and finn's answer about how you have to definitely think like everyone has some sort of like value attached where it's like a million dollars a hundred thousand and companies might pay you a lot starting up but then that growth opportunity isn't the same as it is in startups startups the growth opportunity is probably 100x more than you'd get at any job and you're kind of investing in yourself when you do a startup compared to joining a company you'd really believe in yourself and you think that you can do something great for the world we believe in that on that vein, I think we should talk to some of the Link Ventures people too. So let's let's try to stump them. Boaz. 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 We're coming to you. We we were just going to do the startup founders, but then Brian turned it on to me, and then we also turned it on to Christian. <laughs> so we were like, okay, well, we get Boaz's opinion. So the question of the day today is for someone interested in, say, computer science, tech, AI. Why do you think they should go the startup route versus work in just a big tech company? Because we have a lot of successful founders, but then they're also just successful in their own field. So they have the opportunity to work at these other companies if they wanted to. Yeah. So obviously, I think working at a startup makes sense. The question is, do you want to capture most of the value? I think right now there's you know more than 20 trillion of value to be created by the young founders. So if you want to really capture a meaningful part of that and not just contribute, go and start a, a startup, especially if you're, you're from a, a great ecosystem like you know what we have here. So now obviously there are different motivations. Some people just want to build, have more structure and like freedom to build and safety net. Go and join a startup. You want to like be part of like designing the future and also capturing uh, a large chunk of it to go and build a startup. Okay, sounds good. Cool. So these two Northeastern founders just came in. Let's go uh, ask them also. Hey, Eli. I think people often think about like, I'm a, I'm a very big advocate for startups. I'm obviously doing one myself. I think people um, tend to think about startups and they're like, oh, I can make a ton of money and uh, not have to work very much, but it's very much the opposite. <laughs> uh, you end up working more and probably not making as much. But what I would say is that um, you get to work, you get to pick on what you wanna work and working on something you love, I think is 10 times more important than anything else. And um, you also get to pick when you wanna work, which is also very important to me and having that level of autonomy as well. 
And down the road, you can make yeah. even more money. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. More earning potential. <laughs> that's cool. huge. And let's, you can pass it on to Mike. Um, yeah, for me, it's a lot of the same stuff, but I would say like I've, I've worked 14 months um, as like an intern in just like a company as a software engineer. And it's a good gig. Like a lot of people kind of want that job, but um, I think with a startup, you can really work on a mission and a product that you really truly care about. A lot of my experience at like not even big tech, but just like a company, you don't really feel the same connection and passion on what you're working on. And um, at a startup, you choose what you want to work on when you work on it. And you just get a lot more responsibility and agency. Um, and there's no bureaucracy holding you back from like you get to choose you analyze a problem, you pick out how you should solve it, and then you go do it. Whereas if you're just a regular employee at another company, you're only kind of limited to maybe like actually doing the thing as opposed to finding the problem and figuring out how to solve it. And I think that's, yeah, it's just been big for me and why I love it so much. Yeah. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. If you made it this far, also let me know. And as always, stay inspired, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one.